Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about five ways Kony could be a better buy than Tesla. Price appreciation, volatility, yield based on volatility, crypto cycles, potential max upside and downside, and Bitcoin spot ETFs. Let's get it. So <clears throat> the first thing that I want to bring up is the price appreciation potential. So we're going to compare Coinbase to Tesla on some of these swing highs, swing lows, okay? So you can see this little area right here was during pretty much about the end of the crypto cycle or bull market cycle. So upside on Coinbase was 71%. The downside from the peak to the low. Hold on, let me move that so you guys can actually see it. The downside from the peak to the low was... Roughly about 84%. If we go all the way down, we're talking 90%. And then from the absolute low to where it currently sits is about 51%. Or uh, sorry, 151%. Uh, so if you had bought at the absolute bottom and held, you would have roughly about two and a half extra money in about a little under a year. So that's a pretty good return on investment. That's actually quite difficult to find in the stock market unless you get involved in small cap, big tech, or not big tech growth, but big upside explosive tech stocks. So that's what it would be looking like on Coinbase. Now, if we go over to Tesla, you can see on Tesla, it paints a different picture. Well, why is this? Because... Crypto moves in cycles, whereas Tesla moves with the stock market. So they're two entirely different beasts. But if we go from the low to the high here, well, 1,600%, you basically would have had to buy before the zombie virus. But um, let's just go ahead and do the... So this would have been roughly about the end, the top of the crypto cycles. So from the top to the low, you get about a reduction of roughly 74%. So the drop is still not as bad as Coinbase would have been. On Coinbase, you would have been minus 90% if you bought at the exact top and held all the way down. Tesla, you would have been down only 74%. Now, Tesla is still extremely volatile, but still not as volatile as crypto and Coinbase. So from the low to the high here, 200%, that's pretty good, right? So the upside downside is roughly about the same. I would say Coinbase is a little bit more volatile. Um, so let's assume for a second that Tesla and Kony are roughly about half that on the downside and the upside. So, you know, you got, what, about 30% down and then... Roughly about 46, 47% up. And then another 27% down. So we'll go ahead and look at Coney's. The, um, so the, the drop on Coinbase was roughly about, I would say, 20% greater than it was on, te on Tesla. And also the upside potential here. Actually, let me go ahead and go back to the charts so I can show you guys what the potential upside would be. If I could find it, give me a second. So Coinbase, we'll go back to Coinbase real quick. If we go from the low to the high here, you can see that well, <laughs> it's so much that I can't even get it on the screen here. So anyways, you can see that the low to the high up an upside of about 740%. So that gives you an idea of just how insane these moves can be. So we'll just say hypothetically that if, if Kony went down, it would be about 20% greater than Tesla. And if Kony went up, it would be about three times greater than Tesla. Okay. Because... Tesla from the bottom to the top was 200%. Coinbase from the bottom to the top was roughly about 750%. We'll be conservative here and say 600%. Um, so Tesla went up. We'll just pick one of these. 
So that way we don't have to go over all of them. Um, so you got about 45% there in potential upside. So 3X on Coney would be about 135%. So let's go ahead and pull up Coney here real quick. And we have very little to work with because these this um, Yield Max ETF was just released. But from the bottom to the top, actually, I'm going to have to give me a second. I'm going to have to really, really scroll out for this thing. Believe it or not, crypto actually does move this much. This is going to look kind of insane. But so if you're talking roughly about 135% turn or about 3x Tesla, assuming that the moves are similar between the underlying stocks and the yield max ETFs, this thing could go from where it is or from the recent low of 1738 all the way potentially up to $40.69 a share. And then likewise, if it dropped 90% from 40 69 we'll say i mean it could it could go down pretty low it could go as low as maybe three four dollars um i know that may be scary for a lot of investors so i'm gonna go over some more metrics that you guys can look at that will give you a better insight as to how to make these moves so that covers the first and second reasons so the first reason is price appreciation the second reason is volatility based on the underlying stock Coinbase is, because it's crypto-based, much more volatile than Tesla. So the other thing I want to mention about volatility is crypto in general is much more volatile than any stock in the stock market, okay? You have to understand this. Crypto is wild. It's like a roller coaster. It's up, down. It's all over the place. It's to the absolute extreme, okay? And the options plays that these guys do with the old max funds are based on volatility. So ideally, which leads me into the third reason, the yield would be higher than what Tesla is paying. So let's just assume for a second that Tesla, with its current yield, um, if we go over here, we take a look at Tesla. So Tesla's yield as of currently would be roughly about 68%. We'll just say that Coney's yield potentially would be about roughly one and a half percent of that or 1.5 times that of Tesla. So you're talking, we pull up the calculator here is 68 times 1.5, 68 times 1.5. So roughly about 102%. It seems crazy. Honestly, I think it's crazy but it's possible. Okay. So if we take the most current yield amount, which is 83 cents on Tesla, and we do 1.5 times on that 83.03 times 1.5, you get a dollar 24 per share of Coney that you own. It sounds absolutely ridiculous. I know, but you guys have to understand options are based on volatility the more volatile something is the greater the potential premiums could be and i'll give you guys an example so and i'll link i'll leave this video in the description for you guys but i will um go ahead and pop the nvidia videos in there so you can see i actually went over the price gains of all of 2023 on all of the underlying shares for these yield max funds which includes apple and all the other big tech companies Apple is less volatile than Tesla, which is part of the reason why Tesla pays out a greater, greater dividend, greater premium. So you can see that Apple here is 32%. Most recent payouts, 55 cents. If we go back to Tesla, it's 68%. And of course, Coinbase is going to be more volatile than Tesla. So let's go ahead and run some numbers here. Let's just assume that you had a let's just say 500 shares of Tesla, which I actually currently have a little bit more than that. You get about $415 a month of passive income. That could help a lot with a lot of things. But if you have 500 shares of Coinbase, or Coney, I should say specifically, 500 shares of Coney at $1.24 a share, you would get roughly about $620 a month. So just by owning Coney, the potential upside on a 1.5x 1, 1. times premium that of Tesla based on volatility, 
you by owning the equal amount of shares of Kony over Tesla, you would receive roughly hypothetically about $200 a month extra of income. Now, keep in mind, the uh, price of Tesla is slightly higher than the price of Kony. One thing to keep in the back of your mind is that September typically is a very bearish month, not just for stocks, but for crypto as well. So the price of Kony could actually come down and the price of Tesla could come down in September, which would bring the price of Kony a little bit closer to Tesla. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's September 1st. We don't know what it's going to look like yet. So we'll just wait and see. Now, the fourth reason I want to bring up is crypto cycles. So I'm actually going to talk about crypto for the very first time in this video. I did say I wasn't going to talk about it till October, but since we're talking about Kony, I'll just go ahead and bring this up. We're going to take a look at the price of Bitcoin today. Okay. So this will give you some idea of just how extremely volatile crypto can be from the bottom from right around where the previous having was, um, Bit the Bitcoin having previously was in May of 2020. You guys can look that up yourself. From the bottom to the top was a 1900% gain or about 19X. But then from the second peak all the way down to the bottom, Bitcoin dropped about 77%. So not quite as much as Coinbase, but pretty similar in nature. Now, if I take something like, let's say, let's just pick like a really, really volatile altcoin here. We'll say something like uh, Decentraland. So this is an altcoin. This is not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is considered to be the safest asset in crypto. But from the bottom to the top, you would have made an astounding 128x on this position. And... You would have lost about 95 percent of your money if you held at the top or bought it exactly at the top and held it all the way down you know diamond hands all that jazz so this just goes to show you how volatile a crypto can be and coinbase is a crypto exchange so they deal with crypto which means that their stock is going to be extremely volatile based on what i showed you guys now the Last thing that I want to talk about with you guys is the Bitcoin spot ETFs, which have just recently been hitting um, headline news. So if I click on this link here, which I'm actually going to leave in the comments for you guys below so you can check it out yourself. So we get this title here. Um, this was on July 2nd, 2023. So it was only just a few months ago. Not just BlackRock, these companies have also filed for spot Bitcoin ETFs in the U.S. Well, who is BlackRock? BlackRock is the world's biggest asset manager with over $9 trillion, $9 trillion in assets under management. Just to give you guys some perspective of how much money $9 trillion is, $9 trillion is worth more than almost all of the Magnificent Seven companies combined, and it's roughly about a third of the national debt of the United States. That's how much money that is. So they filed a spot Bitcoin ETF, got rejected by the SEC. Um, pretty much all of these filings got rejected. You can see here, if I pull up a couple more, you got BNY Mellon. Um, looks like Wisdom Tree and Galaxy Digital, Valkyrie, Venek, uh, Fidelity. Fidelity is another big player. They have roughly about eight trillion in assets. And you also have Kathy Wood's Ark Invest, which is based on the ARKK fund. All the funds that she provides is based on future technology, um, like AI stuff like that. I talked about that in a previous video, but, um, which was actually also the NVIDIA video, which I'll leave in the link for you guys. And OARC is based on AARK, which is her fund. So all these people are filing spot Bitcoin ETFs, and these are all big money players. These are huge, huge companies. These are like the titans of the financial industry, all trying to get spot Bitcoin ETFs approved. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, if even one of these spot Bitcoin ETFs gets approved in the United States, 
crypto is going to go absolutely bananas. I don't know how much crypto will go up or Bitcoin will go up. But there is a potential that mass adoption would happen, which means that trillions of dollars of money could flow into this thing. Again, that's not a prediction. It's hard to say exactly what's going to happen. This is all theoretical. But if it does happen, I myself would like to have some Kony once I see what their dividend payout is. So that way I can, you know, basically front run the upside on that event and also receive some passive income. So anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it provided some value. This is a fresh perspective. This would be my first crypto video, technically, even though I'm not really going to talk about crypto until October. I have a reason for that. I'll explain that in October. So anyways, um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Peace.